Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh Ji. Today, joining us is uh, for the special program of Sikh Channel is the first member of House of Lords to wear a turban, Lord Singh of Wimbledon. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh Sir. I hope you can uh, hear me, sir. I can, yes, I can. How was your day, sir? You have been the talk of the town yeah. today for making the, the decision yes. of quitting the BBC Radio 4's thought of the day show after 30 years of being up there, being a Sikh voice. Uh, let's talk about today. It has been yeah. uh, a milestone in your life as well. And uh, the BBC has already been uh, in this controversy over racism and racist comments. And yeah. now it has been somebody from our own community until and unless it doesn't happen to somebody from our own community it doesn't you know it doesn't affect us as a community we don't really talk about it and you have come forward to make this decision it has gone out to everybody in, in the sea community around the world as well what do you have to talk about sir I think you're absolutely right if we remain silent things get only worse and I am normally a very quiet, tolerant person, but it, it, you can go too far. Yep. The yep. Um, difficulty began, and there's always been difficulties with the BBC because they do not understand the Sikh religion. Yes. They have a very narrow view of religion and the Sikh religion in particular. Now, now, the difficulty is that I was wanting to talk about the martyrdom of Guru Tegh Bahadur. Hanji. And it was all agreed during the morning, the script was agreed, and uh, the producer was very happy. Then it went to a senior producer, and late in the evening, I was told, that talk can't go out. Just no explanation, no nothing. Now... I feel that this is a very important moment in Sikh history, in the development of Sikhism. Mm. And I said yeah. bluntly, if that talk doesn't go out, you'll simply have a, a blank chair in the studio. I'm not going to talk about anything else. Okay. This is something that must be addressed. Yeah. And um, then when they thought of that, they said, oh, all right. They didn't, didn't want the blank chair, chair in the empty chair in the studio. So I spoke about Guru Tegh Bahadur's martyrdom. There was a lot of letters and emails of appreciation and not one complaint. Right. So it was all unnecessary. It says all. If there's something behind it that really bothers me. That is the fear of offending any extremist Muslim. Most mus Muslims um, appreciate the martyrdom of Guru Tegh Bahadur, yes. who gave his life defending the Hindus yep. who were being converted in their tens of thousands, forcibly converted to Islam by a bigoted Mughal emperor. Yeah. He did not represent Islam. Islam's teachings, actual teachings, are far more tolerant. Yes. Now, the difficulty is if we don't speak about that, about this um, very extraordinary um, sacrifice, not for one's own religion. People have died for their own religion. This is another religion for the right to freedom of belief of all people. Now, that is something that Voltaire talk, spoke about. He said, I may not believe in what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. Yes. This is what um, uh, uh, Guru Tegh Bahadur actually did. He defended the right of freedom of speech. Now, the BBC should welcome that sort of talk and that contribution. Yeah. But this mysterious fear of offending others um, in the Muslim community is wrong. Worse, what it does, it strengthens the hands of the extremists in the Muslim community. Many Muslims, most Muslims, are happy with um, Sikhism. We have many teachings that are similar. And um, we have so many Muslim friends. But the vast majority of Muslims would applaud what the Guru did. Right. He was not 
complaining about Islam. He was talking about forced conversion. Don't do it. Yes. You can by all means try and convert people by saying this is what we have to offer. That's Absolutely. a different thing. Absolutely. This is by force. So he stood up for that. Yes. And um, they tried to prevent it. Now, after that happened, they put uh, made things life difficult for me. It was getting more difficult. Eventually, there was one talk in May where I was asked by Christians in Parliament, could I talk about the persecution of Christians around the world? Okay. And I did that. It, again, it was received by the uh, it was well re um, received by the producer of the day. She was very happy, yeah. and it was going out. Then late in the day again, I was told that cannot go out uh, because uh, I'm getting someone else to talk about something else. Yeah. Just rude. And uh, again, I said, "Why? What's your problem?" And um, in all that time, she found she couldn't get anyone. So again, reluctantly, I was allowed to do the talk. And it was again well received by Christians and people of all religions. Yes. So this is just a harassment. The difficulty is they are fearful of offending Muslims in any way. And what they are doing is strengthening the hand of the extremist Muslims all the time. Right. So one thing is about our truth being different from somebody else's truth. But how important is it to address the historical facts and letting people know that it's not just our truth that that you may or may not agree with. It's our history and they are facts. How important that we make people aware of it. It is extremely important. This is history recorded, not by six, but by Muslims and um, the English. Yep. That, they were the people who recorded history. Yes. It, it is, and the thing about history is, throughout history, terrible, people have done terrible things to each other. Yeah. Now, what we can do, and what the BBC are trying to do, is bury history. And if we do that, we repeat the mistakes again and again. Right, yes. We must learn from history not to repeat the mistakes. Right, yeah, and further teach the lessons that history taught us to the coming yeah. generation, of course. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the political correctness that you had mentioned that, uh, yeah. that's, that's forcing the contributors to say non-controversial things and to not stir up the things into a more controversial way. Let's talk about your idea. What, what did you mean by the political correctness? There is throughout the country, not only in the BBC, a growing political correctness. You can say this, you can't say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little open discussion about things would do no harm, and particularly yeah. about religion. Because if we talk openly about religion, what we find is that many religions who boast that we're the only ones and we're exclusive and so on, right. will find that they have commonalities with other religions and yes. that reduces friction and conflict. And we should focus on commonalities. Definitely. We, don't, we don't talk about religion. So that, that is a false political correctness that is harming society. And it's drifting into wider society. In wider society, uh, people, particularly in this Brexit debate, keep saying that I'm right, you're wrong. Yes. There's no discussion, no willingness to hear another's view. And you would have thought in a slot like Thought for the Day, a religious program, people would want to uh, hear another view. And in fact, the people, the listeners, actually do want to. They appreciate and applaud Sikh teachings, uh, our, our Guru's teachings. Yes. But it is only a few um, people who have this mindset, we mustn't say anything that might offend anyone, uh -huh. um, that try and control things. And in the end, what they are getting, and John Humphreys, the a famous broadcaster who's just retired, was saying the same thing, that what you get is something pious, and meaningless. Yeah. It should be related to life. And I've always tried when we get an item of news to put an, um, a, an emphasis to underpin that bit of news or that concern by an ethical input. We need the ethics. We need to sh bring people up 
to remind them of what um, how to tackle common problems absolutely sir so uh, do you what do you think that till what extent has the brexit vote divided uh, uk as a country and has affected its strength in uh, in in unity and multiculturalism it it has polarized much more and part of the uh, reason for wanting to leave is a, a dislike of Eastern Europeans coming here. Yeah. It, it is as bad as that. So we are going backwards towards extremism and racism. When we sh the world is crying out for us to unite, we've got common problems like global warming yes. that we should be linked together and we can only tackle them together. Yeah. One country can't do anything by itself. Exactly. So the world is moving towards cohesion, cohesion, coming closer together while um, the politicians are saying, no, we're different to them. We're better. Now, this is going back a century. Right. And uh, what role do you think media plays in all this, in, in uh, creating opinions, in giving people an idea about what's right and what's wrong, and how has it handled the, the whole Brexit issue? The, the debate in the uh, media has not been open and honest at all. Mm -hmm. It is all about uh, us taking sides. You know, we're pro-Brexit, we're against uh, leaving or whatever. People take very rigid stances, and you see it in discussions, that they are not, people these days are not willing to listen to each other. No, what I'm saying is right, you must be wrong. And that extends throughout society. It's becoming a very intolerant society. Mm -hmm. Sadly, it's not only in Britain, it's happening across the world. Yep, yep. And a, a little fact finding about you, sir, has uh, brought her attention to the fact that you had left the thought of the day back once, back in 1999 as well, sir. Let's talk more about that. What made, what influenced that decision in 1999? I can't remember leaving Thought of the Day in 1990. I've never left it before. Um, the, even for a few months, for a little while, sir? No, no. In fact, in uh, 1999, we were doing it quite regularly. But there have been producers, senior producers, who have their favourites, and they put people, some people on more than others. But uh, I don't think... So there your was. Wikipedia page shows this fact about you that 1999 was also the year when uh, you had once, you had to leave uh, for um, the, the thought of the day show for a little while. Well, moving forward, have you ever faced or have you ever brushed with the, this kind of uh, controversy with the media uh -huh. and uh, the kind of views you have held and uh, the kind of a content that you want to produce have you ever faced any problem uh, with uh, with the media regarding what views you hold before this incident and there are always constant uh, differences of view which is fair enough but in going back to the Wikipedia, in 1999, the 300th anniversary of the creation of the Khalsa, yeah. actually yeah. I was in the news all the time because I went to uh, India to make television uh, programs and radio programs right. for the BBC. So there, there is something wrong there. But the, the conflict with the uh, producers, discussions are always there. And unfortunately, what it is, is a lack of knowledge of Sikh teachings, mm -hmm. yes. because Sikhism is a religion that puts it in the Guru Granth Sahib, is totally devoted to ethical teachings. There's no history recorded in the Guru Granth Sahib about um, fighting with people of different types. That's in history itself, but not in the Guru Granth Sahib. Yeah. The Guru Granth Sahib is all about ethical teachings. Now, in other religions, in the Abrahamic religions, there are the um, uh, uh, Jews were always fighting with different people. Christians have had conflict. Islam, it's there in Islam. But um, it, Sikhism is all about ethical teachings, how to make us, how to make our life better, how to live responsibly, how to look to the well-being of others. Yes. That is it. 
So how do you think that the society today has changed since you have been here since 1933 with every yeah. change of the decade, every changing year, how do you think the society has changed from time to time? When I was growing up, the common perception was Britain, British people are much better and, um, than other people, other people are inferior. That was taught in schools, uh, we learned it, and that was normal. But at the same time, there was not the racism, you, you, there was always teasing and fighting in schools. Yes. That's right, but if you're walking down the road, there was not that sort of antagonism that appeared in the 60s mm -hmm. when the, a large number of people came into the country. Mm -hmm. Then it, racism got much worse. But then with laws and um, slowly learning to adjust and live with other people, it got better. Now, unfortunately, it's getting worse and the media aren't helping. The BBC isn't helping. It is polarizing attitudes. Yeah. So do you think social media also has a role to play the way we are growing as a society? It has a very important role and uh, unfortunately it is mirroring what uh, the BBC and others do, yeah. their opinionated views and um, very abusive comments, yes. uh, those that people disagree with. There's no, it, it's very difficult to get a calm discussion on a topic and the problem is now religion is seen throughout the world as a cause of conflict. Yeah. When it, as in reality, it should be the cure of conflict, but religions are to blame by saying that we've got it all right and we've got it wrong. What religions need to do is to uh, learn to do what the gurus taught, respect other people's views. The gurus actually put Hindu and Muslim um, verses in the Guru Granth Sahib yes. to show that religion has a monopoly of truth. We need to follow those teachings. Society as a whole could learn from the Guru's teachings. Absolutely, sir. And yes. talking about uh, back in the day, as you said, that uh, white supremacy uh, was at its peak. Do you think that even today, even in subtle ways, or maybe it, it's not taught in the schools, but still the perception about supremacy, inferiority complex among the communities, uh, it still exists some way? It certainly does exist, and this is particularly seen in the Brexit debate. We can go it alone, we've got the Commonwealth. They're, people are thinking as if they still have an empire, mm -hmm. and they can uh, do dodgy deals and get at the better of those colonials and make Britain richer again. Yes. Now, that, that's absurd. It's a different world. Yeah, right. And uh, certainly, if we look at America also rooting for, let's, make America great again. Yeah, the, uh, yes. What is the definition of great here? What are we looking at? What do we want to become? It, and through what ways, at, at what cost? The greatness would be to make the world more peaceful, to uh, combat global war warming, and to get a more uh, even distribution of wealth throughout the world so that there's less cause for conflict. But no, the greatness that President Trump is seeing is the ability of America to um, subdue other countries at its will and to um, and do whatever trade arrangements are beneficial to America. Again, to the disadvantage of others. President Trump is even saying that um, the age of um, inter um, cooperation with other countries is dead. We must be patriotic and look to ourselves. Now, that is an inward looking thing that is totally out of place in the modern world. We must look outwards. We must respect other countries, we must respect other people, we must respect other religions. That is the essence of the teachings of Sikhism. Right, and of course it has always been a topic of debate of how much patriotism is important than universal brotherhood or if it's universal brotherhood is more important than patriotism. And this debate somehow seems to have no right answer ever, sir. 
Yeah, but this is, you're absolutely right. The Sikh emphasis is manas ki jatsav ekivachana, recognize the oneness of the human race. That goes against what many people are saying. Look at the way refugees are treated. First of all, the West bombs the Middle East for their own economic gain. We, we will control the oil in the Middle East. Then, and the Russians and uh, everyone's doing the same thing. Then, of course, if you throw a large weight in a pool of water, you'll get a splash. The splash is of human beings um, displaced by this bombing and uh, the murder uh, carried out in their country. So they run away. And what do the West and other countries do? They treat them um, like animals. We've got to stop refugees. We've got to, the poor uh, people try and cross the channel in dodgy boats and drown. And it is becoming such an intolerant and unhelpful world. Right, sir. Also, what do you think that we as a community, the Sikh community, can do to heal this, these divisions um, among our own community, our society in Britain today, uh, given that we have major population in countries like uh, USA, the California side, Canada, Australia? What do you think that we can do to uh, heal these divisions? I think, um, I'm not exaggerating, I think the Sikh community in this country and in other parts of the world can do and should do much more to push the teachings of the Gurus to make them better known. But instead of doing that, there's it's particularly in this country a lot of infighting. We've got to protect ourselves, we've got to get ethnic monitoring so we can get more rights than anyone else. That's not the Sikh way. Yeah. The same way is to Yes, that's true, sir. And um, uh, we know you head up the organization network, of, uh, the network of Sikh organizations. So uh, what do you think the plans of NSO is this year, especially <laughs> celebrating the 450th Gurpurb of uh, Maharaj, Guru, uh, the first Maharaj? No, the, uh, for, for this year, pre previous times I've arranged celebrations in the Royal Albert Hall, but this year, because of so many other pressures, I haven't been able to do that, but we're going to have some commemoration celebration in the House of Lords. Uh, I've been invited personally to so many places uh, right across the country that I'm be travelling almost every weekend from now. Yeah. I've already done so talks. And um, this is the way. But the best celebration of Guru Nanak's teachings is to put them before the world. Yeah. This is yeah. salvation. This is what people need to do. Respect one another. Stand up for one another. If we can make that widely known, I think that would be the best uh, celebration. But we've got a lot to do because most Sikh Sikhs in this country are smug or and um, not looking outwards at all. We'll go to the Gurdwaras, listen to Kit and have Lunga come back again, but won't take the message on board or communicate it to others. Right. Uh, uh, you see, once I, I was doing an inter, uh, interfaith talk and someone got up from the audience and said afterwards, um, why haven't we heard about this wonderful religion with its um, generous teachings? And I smugly answered, oh, we don't proselytize. Mm -hmm. And you know what he said to me? You should be ashamed of yourselves. You've got something good to offer and you're hiding it away. That's true. That's true, sir. Absolutely. Uh, if I may ask, sir, at this age, you're so passionate. What still drives you? What still motivates you every day to go get it? <laughs> I've got it because it, it, I, I'm a sick, and um, I can only live by sick principles. And sick principles are don't stay silent when there's injustice around. Yeah. Or if someone is suffering, help them. I've helped so many people in different ways. And the first one of the first times I went to a industrial tribunal, it was to help a Muslim um, nurse who wanted to wear trousers instead of the then fashionable skirt in hospital. And yeah. you help one another. You stand up for one another. That's that true. is seeking. 
That's true, sir. And uh, the, the time is less. I wish we could have a longer conversation. But right before we go, if I may ask, what is yeah. your mantra in life that you would like everybody to live by? It is the simple t teachings of Guru Nanak to live by this balanced life, Nam Japna Kirtgat Na One Kan Japna. That is, focus on the teachings, not just in an abstract way, but to motivate us to do what's right in society. It's as simple as that. Then, then, then there is the other thing about balanced living, that while we're doing that, um, we can help move society because the six teach about um, the um, Gurmukh and Manmukh. Yes. So there's some nasty people in the world, and yeah. we've got to deal with them and um, um, put them right. That's necessary. But most of us are in the middle somewhere neither doing good nor bad. And then there's some gurmukhs who are mm. always devoting their lives to doing good things. And the aim of Sikh should be to push society in towards a gurmukh um, direction, themselves and others in a gurmukh direction. That's true, sir. Thank you very much for joining Sikh Channel today. Thanks. It has always been a pleasure to have you on our platform. And uh, we hope you get to visit us soon. Uh, till then, Vaheguji ka khalsa, Vaheguji ki fateh ji. Vaheguji ki fateh. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.